so glad that you're here to worship the Lord with us today uh, and, and God is in this place. This is a great season as, as today we think about Thanksgiving, preparing for Thanksgiving Day and then to know next Sunday we'll begin Advent and Christmas celebration. Next week we'll have the Advent wreath right here uh, and, and begin that way of pre preparing our hearts to celebrate the birth of Christ. I want to tell you I am looking forward to Christmas Advent this year just uh, everything's been so different and so unusual and just that journey of celebrating Christ's birth and keeping him our focus on him our Advent candles will be joy peace hope love and light and the light candle will be on Christmas Eve uh, and and that's also the Christ candle that's lit to represent light God's presence with us uh, Christmas Eve the services will be at six o'clock and at nine o'clock I mean at eleven o'clock uh, why I said nine o'clock is because generally I, I like going to bed early and getting up early, so I'm going to have to drink coffee to stay up for that 11 o'clock. Whoever's helping me lead that service may have to wake me up to preach. Uh, glory, <laughs> glory to God. Yeah, so, but excited for all that God has uh, in store for us, ahead of us in those things. Many of you may know that Friday and yesterday were big days here at the church. There were 80 turkeys arrived here, you know, this week, and Friday was one nasty day uh, of, of cleaning them up. They got my wife injecting that stuff, you know, and she was squirting everybody in the world. Uh, Dawn was next to her and got squirted in the eye. Uh, and so, so she, was, she was doing her best. And then yesterday, uh, and we want to thank everybody that bought turkeys, uh, all 80, and have been sold, and one besides that. Uh, and then... Uh, those sponsors who did the sponsoring and especially those who helped repair and debone stuff yesterday we were kind of short on that front so some extra help there that frying process is something to watch and all the interaction and the, the trash talking that goes on in the turkey fry that, there's some good fellowship there holy smokes god help us all uh but a lot of that, too, is setting up this Wednesday uh, is going to be our community Thanksgiving meal. We've had people call and asking if we're still doing that. And we are so excited that we're persevering through this COVID mess to make this happen. It won't look like it's looked like the other years, but we know this is a ministry to the community and we're going to persevere through uh, to get there. Uh, part of that is Nancy is going on Tuesday to have a COVID test and we are praying that she's negative or we're going to be in real trouble. And then also, if you look at this, there's opportunity to serve at nine and preparing. There's opportunity to serve at 11 as those meals are served. And I will tell you, the big thing is one o'clock cleanup, because I saw yesterday when you've been there all day and you're just tired and then you have to start cleaning up. Uh, I got blessed. I had to go deliver a turkey. So, so I, I had to leave right at the cleaning up part yesterday. And yeah, help him, Jesus. You know, they were bad mouthing me as I was leaving. So uh, after I left, yeah, uh, my ears were burning. But but so like on this Wednesday, like a great opportunity is to come at one o'clock and to clean, because if you've been there doing this stuff, it is such a blessing when some other people will show up to kind of finish it off and get it put back right. And so that's going to be uh, a big deal on Wednesday. And we're looking forward to that. I should let you know the flowers today are given by Tracy McKnight, and they're given in memory of his wife, Melinda McKnight, for her birthday as she passed this June. I was telling him just today, this touched my heart as I was doing this. Some of this I can relate to for my mother-in-law, because in that first year, it's so hard as you go by those 
first birthdays, first Thanksgiving, first Christmas without that person. And so, so man, aren't these flowers beautiful you know, today? And, and that's because they're celebrating a beautiful thing. And our prayers are with you, Tracy, uh, in that. And, and uh, we, we, we do remember Melinda and give thanks for her love and life and know we pray for you in that as well. So uh, know that next week is Advent and that uh, we go through Christmas. A part of that, too, the office will be closed this Thursday and Friday due to Thanksgiving. Know that we're going to do poinsettias, and we're going to try to get order forms for that. You'll have your opportunity. We're going to try to get those in the sanctuary on the 13th, which may be a little bit earlier than usual, but just try to keep them alive till Christmas Eve. We're going to do Tree of Love and Lights this year, and this year any donations to Tree of Love and Lights will go toward, we're going to redo the floor in the CLC, in that meeting room, in the kitchen, and in that serving room. We're going to redo the floor in there. We've got a laminate that we're wanting to put down and just improve the look of that. Uh, Kathy Morris, who cleans our church, the rug is unraveling, <laughs> and, and it just looks bad. It's all stained, and so we have a bid, and we're working toward getting that done in that room, and that's going to really improve the looks of the CLC and be great for the usage of that space. And so Tree of Love and Lights, if you make a donation for that, you, some of you know how that works, or will explain it. Uh, forms will be available soon, and all the proceeds from that are going to go to redoing the floor over at the CLC. We'll have the Legend Oaks Angel Tree. We'll have Operation Christmas Blessing. Even, even yesterday, uh, I had a woman reach out through Facebook to our church Facebook site and said, is this the church that does the, the Christmas blessings? She goes, you've helped my family with my children in the past. I'm a single mom and I'm needing help. And she said, there's a woman named Candy, I think, that has helped with that in the past. And I'm needing to, to let you know that I may need help again this Christmas with my children. And I thought, isn't that awesome to be known as that church? And so I've already responded back, and I pray there'll be a good opportunity for ministry, even there to that single mom and to her family. And, and downstairs, right under where this side's sitting, you can't believe all the toys and everything, all the clothes that are all laid out down there, and the preparations are already underway uh, for Christmas blessing. And it's very exciting to go down there and see that. No, also, we do the thing for Newgate, uh, and you can bring blankets. People, people yesterday from Dallas brought blankets, uh, and then the caps and gloves. I will tell you, you don't realize I've been around Highway 80 and Newgate a good bit, and, and you don't think of how important the socks are, but socks are one of the most appreciated things and most coveted items that are brought in. And so if, you, if, you, if you're not knowing sure what to do, just go buy some socks. Uh, it's, it's a great blessing. Those, those, are, those are a real blessing there in those places. And so we're connecting, collecting donations and been doing that. We we'll, have been doing it. We'll continue to do it for several more weeks. Uh, did I want to thank everybody for the turkey stuff. Anything I left out announcement-wise because there's a bunch of stuff going on. Hopefully I got all that. Uh, we're going to join, continue in worship. Will you stand and join with us in worship this morning? We'll say, come, you thankful people. Yes. Yeah.
and the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead, He ascended to heaven, and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to us the quitting the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. into joys and concerns but before we do that it's always interesting sometimes as we sing hymns we come across things and in that hymn uh, it used the word garner does anybody know what a garner is hey Chris would you get ready to go back to the third verse of that uh, I think it'll give us a clue uh, but anybody know what a garner is yeah it looks like it looks like it must be a place to store uh, so down at the very bottom it says but the fruitful ears to store in the garner evermore did you use that in your vocabulary this week huh <laughs> no so I just think it's awesome you know we live generationally and stuff and and so you know uh, that's the one that's real like that you know here I raise mine Ebenezer you know, and I tell you, I don't, I don't, I'll probably will never use an, a garner, okay? But I really love the Ebenezer thing because Ebenezer is like a pile of rocks or something that says, thus far the Lord has brought me, okay? So I hope your garner is doing well today. That means that your storehouse, you know, that, that God is blessing you and your garner is increasing. And then I also hope that you'll raise an Ebenezer that you'll you'll do something to show that you know that it's thus far God has brought you. Amen. Sorry. Just we sing it and I like us to know what we sing too. Joys and concerns today. Uh, what are some of our joys? Let's start with a, with a joy. Anybody have a joy today to start with? I have a joy today that Baylor's here today. Yay, Baylor. I think Baylor's going to be an actress. She is very dramatic. <laughs> She was awesome in Sunday school, and we pray that she'll find her teeth soon. <laughs> Beautiful smile, that, that smile. You're it's great. You're awesome. Good to have. Any other joys today? Some grant, what did you say? My, three of my most precious blessings are right here. That's Maddie. Molly. Molly and Mackenzie. And Mackenzie. Yes, and we had our Thanksgiving yesterday, and it was a blast. My girls are here today, so it just doesn't get over here we have the M and M and M's, okay. And unfortunately, it's only Baylor. We don't have all the B's over here. Just one of the B's over here. So the M's and the B's, uh, and we're blessed. Th thanks, thanks be to God. Yes, we are. It is. You know, yeah, it is great to see you today. It is wonderful. I hate these masks because I can tell that y'all have wonderful smiles, and I can see them kinda. Uh, they can tell they really are so that's that's a blessing I'll mention that in my sermon today I want to tell you there's lots of concerns too so I want to get in some good before we go in that Maxine Stein is battling COVID uh, and, and of even greater concern while that is a concern greater still is Jean Gafford uh, and she's been put on hospice she's been in a uh, regional hospital and 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 it's pretty serious with Jean so we want to be lifting Jean up Maxine as well but but for both of them okay uh, Billy Vines goes in tomorrow to add a heart cath tomorrow so we're praying for her lifting her up God to give her strength uh, in that Beth Marsh is Ryan uh, Coker's stepsister and she's young and struggling with juvenile diabetes 
I'm continuing to pray for Mike Lawson uh, as he was in the hospital last week with pulmonary embolism. Uh, and so Dee is having to take care of him and be his nurse. So we pray for Dee uh, as she tries to keep him on his regimen. Uh, Daryl Hansen uh, had a stamp put in this past week. And then Louise Mitchell uh, is Linda Lucas's mom. Uh, and to pray for her as she lives in Georgia. So these are some of the prayer requests here. Any other prayer requests that we have from our congregation? Debbie and I, there's a gentleman named Ben Aulis. He's in his early to mid 40s. His wife's name is Cheryl. They have three children. He is struggling with COVID. He's on a vent and it way doesn't look good. And just somebody in their early 40s. And then, uh, I wish I'd have brought the sheet in from this morning because, hey, the name of the Emmaus guy, David Houston, uh, is, a, is an Emmaus guy that some of you that are in that Emmaus community may know David Houston. He's around 50 years old. He had a heart attack last week and then unfortunately yesterday passed. And so at 50 years old, and he was a, a strong, a strong in the Emmaus community. Many of you may know him or his family through that. So we're praying for his wife, uh, and she survives him, and praying for his family. Uh, and these these can be hard times on that. Uh, yes, yeah, Stacy. Yeah. Yes. That's bad. To say the name again. Blake Biddy. Blake Biddy. Yes, man. That is horrible to hear. I want you to know we have a number of people that can't come to church right now because they're on quarantine uh, the past week. There's stuff around different places and here in our community and in our schools. And so we're praying for uh, the health of our body. Uh, Back to your sister once again, Meredith. How's she doing? Uh, she's finally on the end. She's still very exhausted with the call finally getting better. That's big. I, I do know that fatigue has been a thing of this, you know, of not getting strength back, you know, as quickly. So we'll pray for that. But so glad that she is feeling better. And then a number of people that we've known that have a habit have had mild cases. I mean, it's not a, a good number of my friends have had it, but have very mild cases. So that does happen but it's still a very serious thing. So uh, it's strange how it affects some people so, so such a variety of ways. With these things in mind, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I thank you that you care about all things, every detail of our life. And Lord, especially just Tracy today, lifting, up, uh, lifting him up in this season as we think of Melinda and are so thankful for her life and just uh, the vitality and love that she brought to life. And so now uh, pray strength for Tracy as he goes this time of her birthday and into Thanksgiving and Christmas, I do pray for my mother-in-law, Linda, as well, in a very similar situation for her. And, and just know that it, it, it makes a heaviness over the holidays for some things, Lord Jesus. Lord, we've lifted up a number of health things, even just especially Billy's here, so thinking of her tomorrow with that uh, heart calf, Lord. Uh, and then just the COVID situation all around our country. I know that I can get just pandemic fatigue over the whole thing, but I know that it's important to keep persevering and praying for health and strength uh, and and for those that are on quarantine father god for their health and those that may have it the different variety of ways that it can affect people father god and certainly it is affecting our country and our world and so lord give us compassion uh, in these days as we know that this is real and that people are being impacted by that lord i thank you for just the uh community thanksgiving dinner that's ahead for all the work that took place yesterday and friday to help make that possible for the fundraiser too for the youth lord that hopefully we made a little bit of money off the whole thing to support them and the activities they'll have next summer and uh lord Thank you that you guide our steps, you direct our path, that you are a faithful God. Lord, we lift up our country in particular. We pray, too, for our economy, for health and strength as we battle this pandemic. We pray for our, our government leadership, for the leaders and uh, whatever transition uh, is ahead, Father God, in that. Uh, and that you will guide our steps, and that we would be one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Lord, let us know your presence, and, and uh, thank you for all you have provided for us, all you do for us. We want to be a thankful people, Father God. 
Hear us now as we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. In just a moment, we're going to stand and do the doxology. This will be the normal time that we take up the offering. Know that there's a basket provided in the back for on the way out. It's been a blessing just the different people that watch online and to know we, we welcome you and we bless those of you that are watching online and participating with us that way. And so even though you that are watching online, we remind you that there's ways that we can give. Last Sunday, uh, teaching the, the upper elementary Sunday school class, there was a young lady that came with her friends and uh, we were doing Bible stuff and she said, I don't have a Bible. And, and how awesome it was to be able to give her a Bible uh, to take home and to know that things like that, that you're offering, uh, helps provide ministry uh, in situations like that. And we praise God just that even through the COVID months that God has kept the finances of our church strong. And we thank each one of you for your faithful giving and are just a reminder, because in this days, it's a great way to express our thanks is, is by giving unto the Lord. With that in mind, let's stand and join together in the doxology.
Amen. Thanks living. That will be our uh, title for our sermon today. And I love that because we think of Thanksgiving. But uh, I think some of the best ways to give our thanks is in thanks living. And uh, I'm going to go into Psalm today in Psalm 92. I'm going to read verses 1 through 4. Uh, it is good to give thanks to the Lord. And we read all through script, Scripture about giving thanks to God and how good it is to give thanks. And this declares that it's good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. I love this, this song, this psalm. So one of the things that I do think of is trying to give thanks to God in the morning for his loving kindness. And at night, when you're going to bed, to give thanks to God at night for his faithfulness, like through the day. So his loving kindness every morning. Now, the part of this that I might have been tempted to skip over because I don't have a musical bone in my body is it says that we are to uh, on an instrument of 10 strings on the lute and on the harp with a harmonious sound. What I play is iTunes. OK, so iTunes should be in there somewhere like, you know, that to play it on iTunes, because if it's up to me, there's nothing beautiful going to come out of strings, the lute, the harp or anything like that. But on iTunes, I can get somewhere. So maybe iTunes. All right. And then it goes on. It says, for you, Lord, have made me glad through your work and I will triumph in the work of your hands. Uh, I'd like to say I love Psalm 92. Part of why I love it, too, is because a little bit later on it goes to talking about barren fruit in old age and so that's the part of this psalm I really claim I want to bear fruit in old age to be flesh fresh and flourishing in my old age and bearing fruit that's in Psalm 92 we're going to go to Psalm 107 verses 8 and 9 and then 19 through 20 and it says oh that men oh that men and women and children and youth would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men for he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with, glad, with goodness. And then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of all their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men and women and youth and children would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. May God bless the reading of his word. I'm going to say something to you now that may sound familiar. And if you know your part, why don't you join in on your part? And if you don't know it, it's okay. But some of you will recognize this. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise to him. And then the preacher will go on and say, It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Where does that come from? Communion ritual. We'll do that next Sunday. That's what we'll say. We'll, before we, when we start preparing communion, I'll say, the Lord be with you, and you'll answer, and also with you. But I love that part where the leader says, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And the people say, it is right to give our thanks and praise to Him. I have what I call power sayings, like, like sayings that, that you, you say that kind of focus your life. And one of those power sayings is, I want to be a disciple who helps make disciples for Jesus. That gives direction to my life. But another one of those power sayings what would be that I say regularly, I want to live my life with a grateful heart. Just, just as often as I can trying to live my life with a grateful heart. And with that in mind, I'm going to suggest four categories today for areas to give thanks. Now, here's what's awesome. I say it's awesome about being a preacher because who knows how many of you will do this. But because I preached the sermon, I had to do it. And that was good. It was a good it was a good practice for me. I want to tell you in teaching the elementary girls Sunday school, it was really awesome. But the, but but the, I was having to lead them along a whole lot till I got to the part that said, what are you thankful for? 
And when I got to the part of what they were thankful for, they just started snapping stuff off that, that, the, the things that they were thankful for. And more, that blessed my heart, and I know it blessed God's heart. Okay? And so one of the things I'm going to do for you, though, is to give you some different categories to think about as far as the, the, the categories for which we're thankful. So it's a right and a good and joyful thing that we give thanks to God for the most important things in our lives. For the most important things in our lives. You know, just the very process of having to think what's important in my life. Okay? I liked preaching this sermon a whole lot better at 9 o'clock because my wife Debbie was sitting right there. And I could look at her to let her know, you're one of the most important things in my life. And many of you may know that right now she's preaching at Danville United Methodist Church. And I love her embracing that challenge. She quits three times a week. Sometimes more. <laughs> but she keeps persevering and God is guiding her forward. And, and, and I love her heart in that. But, but I'm thankful to God for my wife, Debbie. She's one, of, she's one of the most important things in my life. I have three sons, Drew and Mark and Brett. I'm thankful for my sons in my life. I'm thankful that they're responsible adults uh, and, and you know, living productive lives. And, and I, I'm thankful that I'm in relationship with each one of them that we text and call and stay in touch and have I've tried to build an emotional and spiritual connection with each one of them I'm thankful for that I'm thankful for my daughter-in-law Lauren and and I love her so very much uh, and and for the connection that we have I'm thankful for my four grandchildren as well and man what a blessing that is I, I, I always heard about grandchildren but that is the ticket let me tell you what going on that I'm thankful for my parents. I'm thankful that they're still alive. My mom with her stroke, it has really changed their lives dramatically. And she is struggling in her rehab to make progress. But I'm, I can call her and she can answer the phone and I can understand her and we talk. And I'm very thankful for my parents. I'm thankful for my mother-in-law. And the thing is, I know she watches the 9 o'clock service. So I really had to mind my P's and Q's, everything I said at 9 o'clock. Now I can say whatever I want to say because she didn't watch this one. <laughs> I love my mother-in-law. She is awesome. Had awesome. You know, God gave me the best mother-in-law around. I, I love my father-in-law when he was alive. They were awesome. Uh, blessing in our lives. And, and I'm thankful for my mother-in-law. I'm thankful for my grandparents who have passed. But there is a legacy of love that they sowed into my life that Boss and Pop in particular, their legacy lives in my life. I'm thankful for my grandparents. Debbie, Debbie's grandparents, Anna and Jake, uh, and, and Jake used to have this saying, ever loving, you know, ever loving. It was all the time, ever loving. And this past week I saw a book that was called The Ever Loving Truth. Uh, I, I got it just because I love that ever loving, you know, uh, to remember Jake. And I'm thankful for Anna and Jake. What's important to you? I'm thankful for the opportunity to serve the Lord here at First Methodist Church Gladewater and to serve the Lord with you. I want you to know yesterday was a very educational day, spending the day with those guys. Got my work cut out for me here at the church, but uh, it, was, it was awesome and it was a lot of fun and thankful for the opportunity to serve the Lord here. I'm thankful to God for my health. And, and, and I mean, I, I just really mean that, you know, the, to have health is a very uh, significant gift. Uh, I'm not afraid to die. Paul said to live is Christ, to die is gain. And so, uh, you know, I'm not scared of COVID. I don't worry about that. Whatever happens, it'll happen. I wear a mask and try to be protective for other people as a pastor. I don't want to be the one. Uh, Debbie, uh, a friend of hers went and visited his parents and he didn't know he had COVID and he discovered three days later that he had COVID when he went and visited his parents and his dad just died. And how terrible would that be, you know, to, 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 to have something like that and that's very mindful going into this season too. I am thankful to God that he is Jehovah Jireh. And that means he's the Lord, my provider. And I know that everything I have comes from God. I want to be a good steward of that. I'm thankful for God's financial provision into my life. I want to be a good steward of that. I'm thankful to God that he's Jehovah Jireh. I'm thankful to God for the beauty of his creation. 
And just I, I, I love when Debbie and I too get to travel and go different places and see different things. Next year we're hoping to go to Oregon and see that coastline there in Oregon and I hear some amazing things about that and looking forward to seeing the beach is an awesome place to go. There's just a the beach kind of slows you down and looking forward to seeing that coastline. And I, lo I love sunrises and sunsets. I've taught the kids to know that the God gives sunrises and sunsets just for me. If you happen to get to see them, you're blessed. And say you can say, thank you, God, for giving that to Bud. Uh, and, and so I'm thankful for sunrises and sunsets. And the truth is, I'm thankful to God for each day of my life. Amen? Amen. What's important to you? And to make a list and to be thankful to God for the important things. But I'll also let you know, and here's the second category, it's a right and a good and a joyful thing that we learn to give thanks for the good, but seemingly smaller things in life. The seemingly smaller things in life. I may have told you I think I'm not the most patient driver, you know. I've yet to put one of those little Christian fish on my car because I don't think I would represent God well yet. I'm in training. I'm learning. But so I'm just not the most patient driver. But tell me if you do this. If you see a green light and like, like you, you, you want it to stay green. And so like if, I, if it stays green, I can give God thanks. Like, thank God it stayed green. You know? Amen? Anybody else do that? Anybody else do that? I hope so. I just want to know I'm not just that weird. I know I'm weird, but not that weird. Okay? Another thing that, that Debbie and I differ, Debbie gives thanks to God for a parking space up close. Okay? And so sometimes she'll even loop the parking lot like a couple of times, you know, seeing if God will open up one far. But we're different than that because I just park way out there. I never have problems like finding space. I just park way out there and I give God thanks for the exercise. So Debbie and I are a little different, you know, so when we go to a place, you can imagine the conversation, you know, well, and so mostly it ends up, can you at least drive through and see if God provided something up close? So I'll at least do that usually, but I'm not going around two or three times. But, you know, we give God thanks for the little things. You know, one of the things that happened in, in, the, in this past week or so is, is, you know, when you preach, you really have no idea if anybody's listening. You know what I mean? Like you're looking at me, but you can be like, uh, I had this youth counselor one time and, and he could sleep with his eyes open. And, and it was a learned thing because his wife was a talker and she never shut up. And so if you ever saw her coming, you kind of would run away because like, you know, because if she started talking to you, there's no long, no telling how long you're going to. So, and so we, we didn't know that he had this gift until one day we were traveling on a school bus and they were sitting there and she was talking away. I mean, talking, talking, talking to him. And we needed to ask him a question. So we were waiting for her to be quiet for one moment. And so finally, finally, I mean, 30, 40 minutes later, she'd been talking the whole time. She got up and went somewhere else. So when she got up and went somewhere else, we went to him and he's sitting there with his eyes open. And we started talking to him and we realized he was sound asleep. And so sometimes as a preacher, I'm not so sure if anybody's listening or not, but dude, I'm preaching as best I can, hoping somebody, especially with masks, you know, Peyton learned that she can pull her mask up over her eyes and just get a really good nap. Uh, Grafton, you just got to learn that, brother. She's, you know, she can teach you. She's good at it. Uh, but, but here's what happened. In, in the recent weeks, I was preaching and about God has a plan. Anybody remember like preached on God has a plan? Anybody remember that? Okay. Nod your head. That's good. See, nod your head. That's good. Uh, and, and so like I preach God has a plan. And I mentioned one day that I had seen a t-shirt online that said God's plan, not mine. And I really want to buy that. But like I only have 1,750 million t-shirts for which I'm thankful for every one of them. But it makes it a little weird to buy another one, you know, like so I was thinking I just sort of can't really do that. But I mentioned that while I was preaching. Well, lo and behold, somebody walked into my office this week and they had that t-shirt for me. And you know, I treasure the t-shirt, but you know what I really treasure? 
You are listening. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's a miracle. So, so I'm thankful. You know, and so little things. There's little things every day that we can be thankful for. I was thankful that Baylor was in Sunday school today, and what a treasure that was to get to know to get to know her. Another thing that she really said is how she loves her mom CJ. And 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 I know she's here with her dad, but she's like missing her mom, and that was a really cool thing to tell CJ that she has a daughter that loves her very 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 much. That was a cool thing. She loves being with Aunt Stacy also, so y'all must be doing something good. Little things, right? There's tons of them every day. And little blessings, and that God gives us little blessings and learning to be thankful for those little blessings. Now we get to a little different category, okay? That uh, I gotta say one other thing on little things, and they're not really little things, but, but one of the things that's driving me crazy in this COVID time is I do love smiles. I mentioned that a minute ago. I do love smiles, and these masks drive me crazy because quite often you can tell there's a really awesome smile behind that mask and you can't see it and another thing I love hugs I really do I love giving receiving hugs and it's just weird because you really can't you know you know, somebody the other day, because I tend to fist bump here, I'm just trying to be sensitive. I'd rather shake hands. I'd way rather hug your neck, but I'll fist bump. And the other day, somebody said, you, when the first time you went to fist bump me, I thought you were going to punch me. So I was like, oh, sorry. You know, because, uh, you know, but my tendency is I want to hug. I'm thankful for smiles and hugs, even though during COVID, it seems restricted uh, on that. But I'm thankful. Next category, it's right and a good and a joyful thing when we count it all joy, when we can give thanks, even when we're in various trials. Okay? And, and it doesn't necessarily mean we have to give thanks for whatever is causing the trial, but it's when we're in those hard times, those difficult times, to learn to give thanks in those difficult times. James 2 talks about that. You can go through. And I will tell you, this is one where, I mean, I'm just, help me Jesus, you know, to learn to do that. You know what I mean? Because that's not easy. When you're in a hard time, when things are difficult, is to, to cultivate that grateful heart in the middle of difficult times. You, you ever just know that in this pandemic, you can feel the tension a little bit higher? Do you ever just feel that within yourself, the tension a little bit higher? And, and, and just because it's like everything is impacted and everything we do. How are we going to do Thanksgiving? What are we going to do for Christmas? What are we going to do here at the church for Christmas? And there's COVID and we got to do all these things. And it's like the whole tension gets raised up just just because of our culture and our day going through COVID. But to if we're struggling with this and James, it says we can ask for wisdom and that God will help us to grow and understand. And so I'm praying for that wisdom because I want to grow I want to learn to give thanks in all situations, okay? I've named three things, right, so far, right? I've to name the fourth one, and the fourth one is the point of the whole sermon, okay? Because it's right and a good and joyful thanks to give thanks to God for the eternal things which God has done for us. The important things is awesome, but above the important thing are the eternal things, I want you to know that I am so thankful to God that I know that He exists. I don't sit here thinking, I wonder if God exists. You know, like, I'm, I'm done with that. God exists. I know God exists. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to vote. I don't have to ask your opinion because I know that God exists. And, and it's just a part of life for me that God exists. I love Hebrews eleven six that says, But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For those who come to God must know that He exists, that He is, that He exists. And I love this, and that He is the rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek Him. I can live in that verse right there a good bit. So one of the eternal things that I'm thankful for is that I know that God exists. Another thing I'm thankful for is that I know that God loves me. Do you today know God loves you? That's a huge thing. I, I mentioned earlier having power statements. The power statement, I want to be a disciple who helps make disciples. I want to live my life with a grateful heart. Another one of my power statements that relates to this is I am a child of the Most High God. And sometimes when you're just feeling like things are against you or something's down, 
and, and it's just awesome to be able to say, I am a child of the Most High God. And to know that God loves me and that I'm His child is, is a beautiful, power, powerful thing. I'm so thankful that I know that God has a plan for my life. That helps give me a sense of purpose you know, and indirection. I want to seek God's heart. I want to know His plan. I want to know His will. I, I want to be who God is calling me to be. And it's a powerful, eternal thing to know that God has a plan. You know these things aren't just for me, right? God loves you. God has a plan for your life. And, and, and it's eternal truth, things for which to be thankful. I'm also thankful that I know that Jesus is a part of God's plan. God sent Jesus as an atoning sacrifice for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but would have everlasting life. And I'm thankful that I know that and I have Jesus as my savior and that affects how I live now and it affects my eternal destiny. That's an eternal truth and I'm thankful for that. Amen. I am thankful that I know that Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He started it all, and when it all is going to come to a conclusion, God's going to be the one that brings it to a conclusion. He is the beginning, the end, the Alpha and the Omega. I know that, and I'm thankful. Uh, I am thankful to God that I know that He is the creator of all that exists, um, and I'm thankful for God for the gift of His Word, the Bible. The Bible helps us to know God, to know who He is, how He works. The Bible helps us understand why we need an atoning sacrifice. If you ever try to witness to somebody like about your faith, one of the big things they'll say is like, why did Jesus have to die for me? Or any of us, why did Jesus have to die? Well, that's why we understand the law that helped us understand sacrifice and atonement so that when God sent His Son, we would understand what He was doing. And so I'm thankful to God for His Word and the ability to read His Word and study His Word and, and to get to know Him better. Okay? All right, I have one last story to tell before I end the sermon. Checking. Good job. I was hating. I was hoping I wasn't going to have to start all over, okay? Uh, so, so one last story to tell. And, and you know, sometimes when preachers tell stories, like they tell, like, I gave this little old lady a walk across the street, and it makes them look so good, you know, like we do all this stuff. One, if you ever think that, just talk to Debbie, and she'll set you straight. You know, if I t but, but, but the one I'm telling you today is like, like, I'm embarrassed to tell you, but it's significant, okay? I, 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 was a, I was a young child. Laney, how old are you? Seven. All right. I was probably seven or eight, okay? And I had an Aunt Martha. At Panola Junior College, if you ever go to Panola Junior College, you'll see the Martha Miller Administration Building at Panola College. That was my Aunt Martha. Okay? She was an awesome lady that I loved very much, and she loved me. Whenever I would go see Aunt Martha or she would come to see me, she would bring me a bag of goodies. There used to be these things called brown, brown grocery bags, and you would put your groceries in them, you know, like before plastic or you had to bring your own there were these brown ones that were paper they would rip but yeah uh, but so my, my, my aunt would almost bring me a full bag of goodies if I went to see her or she came to see me so there was one particular time you know we went to see my Aunt Martha you can imagine how excited I was you know maybe Aunt Martha but yeah the brown bag you know and, and so, so like I get the brown bag and it's full just for me seven eight years old and so, man, I, I pull it out. I look at that. I pull it out. I look at that. I pull it out. I'm talking 30, 45 seconds. I had everything out of the bag. And I'm telling you, it was good stuff. Good stuff. Snickers bars, toys, good stuff. So I'm sitting there all in good stuff. And I look at my Aunt Martha and I say, is this all there is? You ever, like, the air goes out of the room, like, you know, somebody says something and the air just goes like, and, and you're like, uh, I, you know, even at seven or eight years old, I could just feel the air. So, you know, when that happens, you look to your parents, like, to orient, you know, like, what just happened? I looked to my parents, and what I got from my parents is, you are in trouble. Like, it was that, the spankings coming look, okay? 
And so, man, that was bad. Like, okay, I, I think that was bad. And I can tell my parents. So, but then I went for my parents and I looked at my aunt. And I want to tell you, when I, look, when I looked at my aunt, that, that, was the, that was the deal when I looked at my aunt. My parents didn't have to spank me. They didn't have to do nothing. I look at my aunt and see the disappointment in my aunt's face. That I, sitting there in this pile of stuff, would have the audacity to say, is that all there is? And just her look. And so what I'm telling you today is, man, it doesn't take much for us to count our blessings. We are so blessed. We're sitting like little kids in a pile of stuff that God has provided for us. And, and, and how could we ever just sit there in this pile of stuff and go, well, is this all there is? My Aunt Martha, when she was dying... She was at the hospital. My parents told me, said, you need to go see your Aunt Martha. And so I was in Longview. I drove to Texarkana, and she was in the hospital. And, and, and when I went in the room, you know, she was asleep, you know. And you never know in those situations if, if like, it's an induced sleep or it's a natural sleep. You know, they need their sleep. But I stood there by my, my aunt's bed for 10 minutes just talking to her. Thanking her for the bags of toys, you know, <laughs> apologizing that I would ever say, is this all there is? And, and just talking to her and not knowing if she's hearing or anything like that. And, and uh, so all of a sudden, I, I, I was getting ready to go, and I think she could tell I was getting ready to leave. And I, I looked at her and I said, Aunt Martha, I love you so much. And her eyes opened, and she looked right at me, and she said, Bud, I love you too. And it meant so much that she called me by name because sometimes there's kind of, you know, dementia stuff that sets in in that time and they're just responding. But she called me by name and she said, but I love you too. And I wasn't there 15 minutes, but I wouldn't take anything for that time of going and being there with her. And again, getting to express my gratitude and saying, sorry, I was such a bratty, idiot little boy. And for all the times and the bags and everything that you did and gave, I'm so thankful. For us, God is such an awesome, good, powerful, loving God. He's provided so much, so many important things he provides, so many little things and gifts along the way that just bless him when we notice them and give him thanks. Even in the hard times, he's with us and we can be thankful even in the trials and the, and the, and the difficult times. We can be thankful in those times. But most certainly we want to be mindful of the eternal things that God has done for us and we want to be thankful. And it's one thing to give thanks, but it's a whole nother thing to live thanks. Thanks living. And that, that is to be a good steward of what God has provided, to appreciate it every moment along the way. God is good. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your goodness <laughs> and, and all that you have provided for us, all that you do for us, Father God. It's just unbelievable. And we are grateful and we are thankful. And forgive us, Lord, if ever it would creep into our hearts as this all there is. And Lord, help us to see and to give thanks. Oh, that, that men and women and children and youth would give thanks to you for what you have provided and who you are and what you do. Lead us in this season. Lead us through this season into the Advent Christmas season and be glorified in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Let's stand and join together as we close today. God is
It is awesome to know, isn't it, that God will take care of us, that He does. Uh, and take a moment and look around. For all of you that are watching online as well, you're a part of what we're about to do and what we're about to say. Who are we? We are Christ's name. And we have come to worship the Lord and to give Him praise. Now we set aside for thee, for the Lord of the Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for the way you love us. We ask now to lead us by our Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, be blessed today and let us live this week with grateful hearts. And let us not just give thanks, but let us live thanks for His glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.